a moment, go back to your childhood. Think about a memory, something so intense and amazing that you instantly remember who you were with and what you were doing and how that felt. That is the essence of simplicity. Not dumbing things down, not one-click buttons, but intentionally creating a cascade of connections in here and in here that ignite our passions and actions. And that's our work for the next decade, to disrupt the future of work with simplicity. To get there, we need to just do a few simple things. The first of which is to always remember that simplicity always has been and always will be about power throughout human history. The winners always had things made more simple for them. Losers, always more complicated. Well, in corporate history, who do you think the winners are? Who do you think the losers are? For the past quarter century, I've been studying simplicity at work, a million people around the globe. And what I found is that while we are definitely making advances. Overall, simplicity is leveraged as a tool to make things easier for the company to succeed, not the individual. And we, here in this room, and everybody that sees this video, has to advocate more for the individual because the future of work is gonna be complicated, complex, arduous, and everybody is gonna be on information overload, and it's gonna be really hard we need to be the advocates for everyone. Because on top of all that, Microsoft recently completed a study that found the average attention span of everybody in this room and everybody back at work is that of a goldfish. <laughs> Just a few seconds. And on top of that, another recent study of millennials, the up and coming management generation, found that 20% of millennials text while having sex. Now, if, if, they can, if they can focus on their partner in a disciplined way for just a few seconds and minutes, how the hell do you think they're going to do with this disruptive, complicated, overloaded decision-making they have to make? We need to advocate for them, and yes, technology will help. I'm an IBM futurist. I do believe I'm an optimist that technology will help only if we are workforce-centered. So what am I asking all of you to do is to be a disruptive simpleton. We have to be advocates to help everybody at the workforce level. And what's the one thing I need you to do? To practice disruptive empathy. And the great news is there's already a discipline and practice around this. It's called design thinking. Working backwards from the needs of the individual, not just the institution. Now, the biggest metric I want you to think about in the future of work is 1,440. That is the number of minutes everybody gets in a day. And as long as we are corporate-centered, we are going to waste and abuse and destroy more of every individual's minutes. So I'm asking all of us to think about the legacy we want to leave a decade from now. Will we continue to be as corporate-centered as we always have been? Or will we stand up and be disruptive simpletons and start leaving a legacy where we made it easier for every individual to succeed? And what I want to do in closing is love you the way I'd like you to love the workforce. I'm going to stop about at the four-minute mark and give you a minute back of your life. And that's what I want you to do for the workforce. Be a disruptive simpleton. Give them back more of their 1,440 minutes. Make it easier for every single individual to have a better life, to succeed, and work smarter, not harder, because we delivered simplicity at their level.